Hello, so today we're going to take a look at recovering from unusual attitudes in an aircraft. And I was going to do this with minimal visibility, but after reading up lots and lots of notes about it and watching videos of professional pilots explaining the procedures, it turns out your primary sense of knowing which way up you are is to find the horizon immediately. Your next thing you're going to do is find out if you are accelerating or decelerating. So there's the, there is an order to the things you do. So the first thing you're going to do is control your acceleration. So if you are climbing, when you discover you are in an unusual attitude, you go full power to give yourself more time basically to correct the aeroplane. If you are descending rapidly and therefore the speed is increasing, you pull the engine back to get, again to give you more more time before the aeroplane falls to pieces around you. So if you if you exceed your never exceed speed, you're in huge trouble. So yeah, your your primary concern immediately is power. Then your next concern is getting the horizon level as fast as you can. And that is the the primary term there is as getting the horizon level as quickly as you can. So your method of getting the horizon level is important. So this generally comes down to rolling before using pitch. So get the wings level first, then bring the pitch in. And again, it's, it's really difficult. If you read 10 different versions of the instructions that different people have written, they'll write it in different ways, and often there's loads of caveats. So it's like, do this, and you know, always do this, unless. And it becomes really, really confusing. So the best thing you can do really is go and do aerobatics in the simulator and get used to the aeroplane being upside down or you know 45 degrees away from horizontal or 45 degrees 60 degrees nose up 60 degrees nose down try tumbling the aeroplane and then getting it back out as quickly and safely as you can to level okay so we're going to jump inside i'm going to close my eyes and then i'm going to figure out what's happened to the aeroplane so i'm closing my eyes now and we're going to... I've got the aerobat by the way, so don't worry about the aeroplane getting broke. So I'm opening my eyes. What's happening? Okay, we're going downhill, so throttle off. Wings level. And as smartly as possible, pull the aeroplane out of the dive. Then re-establish throttle for cruise. And we're good. You should never, when you're recovering from an unusual attitude, you should never have an altitude in mind to come out at. You just get the aeroplane back under control and in level flight before you think about doing anything else. Okay, let's do this again then. So I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to roll the aeroplane. I don't know which way out I'm going to come out of this. And cut the throttle and let's have a look. Oh, we're going downhill. So again, roll first got very near the maximum speed of the aircraft there. So you can see how accidents can happen. So uh, ideally you're going for the shortest route to get the nose back on the horizon. So there is a huge temptation apparently in the real world, we'll, we'll simulate it, there is a huge temptation, say you are coming off the top of a crazy flip over, say we've hit a um, a vortex in the air or something, a wind shear, and we tip the aeroplane over and we're upside down. There's a huge temptation to pull under, which look at the speed increasing. I mean, we did that very smoothly. There's a huge temptation in the real world to just pull under to get out of it, when the real solution to, say, being at this angle was to roll it back quickly. So get the nose to the horizon as quickly as you can. Yeah? So pulling under in, in this situation, for example, pulling under is not the right thing to do. So we could go to do that, but look at the speed building as we dive. That is a bad decision. Say we are 45 degrees upside down this way, and we're going to start to spin if we're not careful. 
So the solution is to get the nose to the horizon and get back on the power. So if you are diving towards the floor, you obviously pull the engine back to idle. If you are losing altitude, when you discover that you're going uphill at a rate of knots, you go full power and you let the aeroplane stall if it's going to. Get the airspeed back, again low power now, and then back to cruise power. So it very rapidly changes, it's not like one solution fits all, and that's where a lot of these textbook descriptions of what to do just don't work for these kind of situations, because the situation unfolds and it may reverse very quickly. You know, you'll go from one situation to a completely different situation. It's completely organic. And there's no easy way out of it, or no easy way to describe it. But the general guiding principle is get the aeroplane airspeed safe, or the rate of acceleration safe if you can, and then get the nose to the horizon as quickly as you can. And then, once you've done that, you can start looking, at, looking after speed and trim. Okay, so that was all for today. I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that was interesting for you. And we'll continue on this topic at a later date. So that was unusual attitude recovery. So just to summarise, you look after your rate of acceleration first by using the throttle. Then you roll because it's faster than using pitch typically. Then you get the nose to the horizon by the shortest route. Okay, I'm going to leave it there.